we're back. And today we are coming back with Recovery Episode 2. This is going to be quite a personal video for us. It's going to be talking about our struggles in the past 18 months. And it's kind of what drew us together actually, to sort of start this. So yeah. We've both been through quite a similar experience and we've had a real major setback. So get your Kleenex at the ready <laughs> while we fill you in on the past 18 months. So recovering from illness and injury. So my personal experience of this, just to take you back about a year, I was in prep and I noticed some digestive issues. I put it down to the classic prep. I definitely have IBS and I'm probably intolerant to everything. And I put myself through various exclusion diets. I spoke to my coach and we changed a lot about my diet and optimized my gut health, which did help actually. But I was still getting an awful lot of pain and bloating. And I also had something which is quite uncommon in somebody of my age, but it's more common in women after having babies and that sort of thing, um, which was a prolapse. And I kind of noticed that and I knew that something was definitely wrong. So I went to my doctors and long and short of it was, I had a large piece of my sigmoid colon, which is your large bowel, was completely dead and paralyzed. Now, me being me, despite the ongoing pain and bloating, decided that I was going to push through and do the British finals for BMBF, which I qualified for this year. Um, whether or not that was a healthy decision is up for debate, but it's one that I would have regretted not doing, and it was a fantastic experience. However, two weeks after, I, I did do the finals. Um, I had a planned sigmoid resection and a prolapse repair. So this was a four hour operation, which took out about a meter of my large bowel and also fixed the prolapse. Now, just to put that into context, our large bowel does an awful lot for our body. It helps us digest and especially helps us reabsorb water. So I was told that I would kind of be out from count for about six weeks after, and I'm now four weeks post-op, and I'm back in the gym doing kind of lighter weights, trying to stay lighter, digesting more food a lot better and slowly putting the weight back on that I lost when I just had the surgery. I feel an awful lot better having had surgery but it mentally was really difficult to go from 12,000 steps a day, nice heavy sessions and a busy busy job as a GP to lying in bed, unable to get up to pee and <laughs> not able to feed yourself except if it was porridge. So really, this video is going to be a little bit about how I've coped with that and then also how they sort of move forward. And yeah, how you move forward when something literally puts the roadblocks on everything that you've been doing for the past three years. So my personal situation then, um, so I went travelling back in 2016, the end of 2016. And at the end of January 2017, just randomly with some family friends, just had some seizures, um, was unconscious and got airlifted to hospital. Um, from then I was sort of out for the count for a few days. Um, turned out I had contracted encephalitis, which is very similar to meningitis, but meningitis um, attacks the me membrane of your brain, whereas encephalitis is actually in sort of the main part of your brain. Um, and my body was just sort of attacking my own brain cells so for some reason there was some autoimmune de dysfunction but my body was just sort of attacking my own brain um, and in the end I was in a coma for 10 days I was in hospital for four weeks and then it was another couple of weeks before they would let me fly home so it was safe to fly home after that I was not in a great way um, my mental health obviously it is your brain and my overall physical health was pretty poor. I was on seizure medication which I really struggled with the side effects of that as well. I had a lot of fatigue, slept <laughs> some, some days for like 18 hours of the day and just sort of generally like the overall feeling of exhaustion was just something that really shocked me and really set me back. Um, signed off work for nearly seven months and um, just sort of adapting to life. I'd gone from working full time, prepping, competing, traveling the world on my own, 
to suddenly I was back at my parents' house. I wasn't allowed to drive, I wasn't allowed to work. I gained a lot of weight um, from obviously lack of mobility. And yeah, it was just sort of not a good, very good place to be in. So we're just sort of opening up a little bit about our experiences and how we sort of have thought to come back from that. So what really helped me when I was in hospital and I came round for the anaesthetic, I immediately started journaling. I wrote down everything about how I felt and what I could control, which wasn't very much at that point. But what I could control is making sure I was relaxed, making sure I was resting, making sure that I was on point with my medication, making sure that I was on point with my hydration, moving as soon as I could, getting out of bed and just walking a few steps and a few more every single day and writing that down. So my journal was very similar in layout but not in content to my prep journal. Yeah. You know, my step count was maybe 50, but then the next day it was 100 and then the next day it was 200 and I felt that way I was making progress. Yeah, I, mine was quite similar actually. So I did, I also kept, my mum had bought me like a day by day journal. So I did tend to write down sort of how I was feeling and just sort of what I'd done that day because I had memory issues at the time as well. Um, and then also I had physio whilst I was in hospital to try and get me moving again. So again, just sort of like gradually building it up. I remember I, when I was um, out of hospital again and I tried to go for a walk with my dad and we've probably been walking for about two minutes. I just started crying because I was like, I'm so tired <laughs> and just felt really feeble. But every day it came out a little bit easier and get a little bit further and just sort of, yeah. yeah really and that's the thing very to remember gradual. that although the pain and the frustration is at times the worst that you think you've ever had, it will pass. Yeah. And believing that it will pass was a huge, huge thing for me and really kept me mentally strong. Secondly, was nutrition. So for me, it was a bit different because I was on a liquid diet for a kind of couple of weeks after. But my very long-suffering boyfriend brought me in good wee isolate, all measured out with my almond milk. Made sure that I was getting enough carbs and enough protein to fuel my body and fuel my recovery going forward. And also, I kept on top of my regular supplements I take in prep. So I was taking my omega threes, my vit D's. A multivitamin, um, probiotics. I found yeah, really high dose probiotics mm -hmm. as well. Just to really, I'd had antibiotics, really put the gut again, yeah. and make sure it was digesting whatever I could get into me. But now, and I think we both sort of struggled. We both went from phases of being very fit and yeah. active to sort of and very independent. <laughs> very like not. We're not the kind of people to ever ask for help. Yeah. If we can do something, we'll probably like lose a limb trying to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm and be like, can you go and get that for oh, me? Yeah, of course. Of um, course. So from there, we kind of just wanted to talk about, so we've spoken about our experiences, but sort of what we found helpful and sort of, for anybody who's going through something similar, or even just if you've had bad glandular fever or a bad yeah. flu and you're really struggling to get back or into your routine. Or you just had a baby and you're coming back yeah. to the gym after something like that. I would say your body, be proud of it, however it looks, and start from where you are. So don't immediately I mean, I woke up and I had a huge blow to dab with a great big scar in it. I wasn't going to look at my ab shots from the week before because <laughs> what's the point? Start from where you are. This is what you've got and this is your starting point. And there's absolutely no point thinking, you know, I look pathetic. I'm so weak. I look awful because that's where you are today. And that might not be where you are tomorrow. So that is your day one. Prioritize your rest. So lots of sleep allow yourself to sleep, allow yourself to sit down. You don't need to be hitting your 10,000 steps a day. So your body's not able, your body's fixing itself. It's not able to recover from, you can't go absolutely max out effort in the gym because your body's focusing on fixing what's wrong with it. It's not worrying about building muscle and <laughs> improving your physique at this point. So you sort of allow yourself to rest, allow yourself to step back a little bit. And I, I went back into the gym and I did bodyweight exercises. Yeah. I was doing 10 bodyweight squats. I was the exact same. And it was, and that was, it enough. was exhausting. Yeah. You were knackered. And actually, that's totally fine. And I couldn't contract my abdomen as part of my, my recovery. And so what I did was cable work. I wrote myself a really basic upper lower split, which I'm still following pretty much. Um, and each time I trained, just focused on putting a little bit more contraction into the cables. Yeah. 
and making sure that I was really, really using the muscles as they should be used. We spoke earlier as well, we both went through a point of just sort of going back and looking at our technique and saying, right, well, I don't need to add a load of weight at this point in time. So what I can do now is I can focus on getting those muscle contractions in and correcting my form yeah. and getting my technique nailed so that when I am better and I can start building the weight again, then I know that I'm going to really be maximising what I actually want to build. Yeah. But yeah, just keep the faith. <laughs> yeah. Another little pointer was maybe think about changing your training environment. I obviously train at a bodybuilding gym usually. So what I did was I took all of the sessions that I was doing and I put them into a pure gym because I felt less pressure there. I didn't feel like I was going to go and overtrain and try and match the weights that I had been doing on machines I had been using because it was all a different environment so I was anonymous there. I could put my big baggy hoodie on and do my body weight squats and feel satisfied. So that's another little tip for you is get out of your usual routine and start new, start fresh. And just remember you're still, still the athlete you once were, you're just going for a different phase right now so it will come back. Muscle memory is a brilliant thing. Yeah, it comes back quicker than it took in the first place. So keep your yeah. faith; it's, it's all going to work out. Yeah, and also if you are feeling pressure from other people, come off social media for a bit. You don't need to be looking at people that you work competing against, or your best friend looking great and are going out dressed when you're lying on the couch in your jammies, feeling pretty awful and bloated. Yeah. Is that going to help you? Probably not. So wear clothes that you're comfortable in. Don't try and squeeze into things that hide in your scar. Yeah. <laughs> Don't try and push your body into places it doesn't want to be yet. There's going to be time for that. And again, with your diet, just because you aren't as active, it doesn't mean you want to curl up on the sofa. Without, well, you do want to curl up on the sofa with ice cream. Chocolate is allowed sometimes. It's allowed sometimes, but Healing. maybe not every day. <laughs> maybe every single day. But yeah, but hopefully people can take a little bit from this. Um, it's obviously something that's quite sort of close to our hearts. Yeah. So and it's to really share our insights and it's anybody. something psychologically I think for both of us yeah. was actually the biggest battle. I mean, your body is capable of doing a lot more than you think and recovering a lot better than you think. Yeah. But your mind is what needs to stay strong in this kind of phase. So if you are struggling with any of the issues that we've spoken about, then please get in touch with us. Yeah. I'd be glad to help. Um, and as ever Thanks like and subscribe and thank you for watching. Thank you for watching.